The following VETSIM video has been created by Aviation Pro for the P1 pilot rating course of the VETSIM Pilot Training Academy. Visit academy.vetsim.net for more information. In today's video we're going to show you how to connect to the VETSIM network using the two main pilot clients Squawkbox and FSIN. Now before connecting to the VETSIM network with any pilot client, please make sure that your aircraft is positioned on a gate instead of an active runway. And as a beginner on the VETSIM network, it's wise to take just a little general aviation airplane and put it on a general aviation platform at an airport with active ATC. So you can later test if the ATC works, if your radios work, as soon as you've connected using Squawkbox or FSIN. So as you can see, I've placed this uh, Beechcraft Baron 58 on a small general aviation ramp at Prague Airport. And we're going to use this airplane in order to see if we can receive some air traffic control uh, frequencies. So let's first start by connecting using Squawkbox. As you can see, I've, uh, I'm running Squawkbox outside of Flight Simulator. You can also run it inside Flight Simulator as a little window, but uh, this gives you some more frames per second. And um, yeah, we're just gonna do it uh, this way. As you can see, I've started up Flight Simulator here already. So we're just gonna go to Start and we're gonna click on Connect. So here we have the Connect page uh, in order to connect to the VETSIM network. And I'm just gonna run through this page in order to yeah, get it online on the VETSIM network. So what we have here is the server. As you can see, there are a couple of servers that we can use. Now, which server is the best one to pick? Just a server which is closest to you. Uh, you can also uh, check this via VETSPY, if you just go over here to VETSPY. As you can see, we have here a server list, and by clicking on those server names, you can check out the ping of that server. So obviously, it's a wise decision to pick the server with the lowest ping. In this case, it would be Vetsim UK as I live in Europe. So I will take Vetsim UK as that will give me the best connection results. The next thing you have to enter here is the Vetsim ID that you have received upon registration. Uh, you should have received an email with your unique Vetsim ID, also with your password, and you can uh, decide whether to uh, remember that password or not. The next thing is the call sign. A call sign is used to um, identify uh, you as an aircraft on the frequency. So uh, if you are entering uh, United 214 right here, it will uh, see you on the radar as United 214. So in this case, uh, I'm using a general aviation aircraft. Um, so my call sign would basically be the same as the registration back on the aircraft. So this case would be Papa Hotel Bravo Yankee Alpha. Now if you're flying for an airliner, you would always use a call sign first with the ICAO code of the airline. So if we take the United example again, it would be Uniform Alpha Lima, pronounced as United, and then 214, as you can see. So basically always when you're flying for an airliner, use the ICAO code following a number or a combination of numbers and letters. Uh, but of course we recommend to use a real world call signs. Um, so if you, for example, going to fly from uh, Dusseldorf to Amsterdam, and you know that KLM uh, uses that route as KLM2 for Juliet, um, yeah, it might be handy to use that call sign because air traffic control uh, will assign you the real world gate as well. And uh, of course, that adds a little bit of realism too. But since we are uh, flying a general aviation airplane at Prague, we're just gonna enter the registration back on the aircraft, uh, Papa Hotel Bravo Yankee Alpha. So ATC will know us as Papa Hotel Bravo Yankee Alpha. The home airport is the airport where you live uh, closest to in the real world. Uh, of course, you have to enter your real first name and your real last name. And then you have to select an aircraft uh, right here. Uh, you can add any aircraft you want. Now, uh, the aircraft we're flying today is not uh, in there yet, so we can add an aircraft right here. So we'll just quickly run through this. Uh, you just enter the name of the aircraft. Uh, well, of course, again, that's the registration of this airplane. Uh, the aircraft type then, uh, you have to select the correct aircraft type. Uh, this is important, so ATC knows exactly what type of airplane you're flying and uh, also can take uh, care of that. So for example, if you're flying a 737, but you're choosing a 747, that's a major difference because ATC will handle a 747 differently than a 737. So make sure you always select the correct aircraft type. So in our case, it would be the Beach Baron 58. 
Now the airline and delivery, um, also make sure you select the correct airline if you're uh, using uh, an, uh, a jet. This will help other pilots to see you as that uh, typical airline. If you don't choose any airline, you will see some kind of standard livery that's uh, very ugly, but at least if you choose the correct airline, people will know you and can see you uh, uh, with that livery in the virtual environment. So uh, make sure you select the uh, correct airliner if you are using an, uh, a real jet, but in in our case we're flying a little VFR airplane and there's no real airline associated with it. So we are just uh, using the generic livery. The cell call, uh, the cell call is a code used mostly uh, for oceanic procedures. Uh, this is a basically a combination of two codes that are represent tones. And those tones can be sent to you when you're flying over the ocean so that air traffic controller uh, can let you know that he wants to get in contact with you. So uh, you can find these kind of codes on the internet. Uh, there are uh, aircraft databases out there with uh, the cell call codes of real airplanes. Uh, you can also make one up yourself. But since our aircraft is just a little VFR plane and we're not going uh, to fly over the ocean, we don't have to do that. So it's uh, fully optional. But uh, if you're going to fly oceanic, I recommend uh, entering a cell call code here. So we click OK and we now we have selected the aircraft. And we are ready to connect, so simply press the connect button and let's see what happens. So as you can see, we are now connected to the VETSIM network, um, as the Papa Auto Bravia and Gi Alpha, Beechcraft uh, 58, Beechcraft Baron 58, uh, connected to this RP address and we're transmitting on a certain frequency. Now as you can see, uh, there is some ATC online, of course it's now the in the afternoon, so it's not very busy in Europe, but at least we can have some ATC to listen to, so uh, let's Go back into the cockpit and uh, take a listen to the air traffic controllers. So welcome back into the cockpit here, uh, here at Prague Airport. So as you have seen, there is no ATC online in Prague. But Warsaw radar, which is very close, is online on frequency 134.9 or 2. So all you have to do now, as you have connected to the VETSIM network, is tune in that frequency and listen to the air traffic controllers. Um, so let's do that here right now, 134.9 or 2. And that's the sound that Squawkbox will give you when you're uh, when you're on an active air traffic control channel. So now you can sit and listen to the air traffic controllers. Uh, you could also listen to the ATIS of an airport if it's available. So look, there was already a little transition. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, I'll go off the frequency right now. As you can see, that's the sound that will uh, sound when uh, you're off from a frequency. So that's your first connection to the VETSIM network using Squawkbox. As you can see, it's pretty fun to hear the air traffic controllers for the first time. So now let's go ahead and uh, connect using FSIN. So let's now uh, continue with FSIN. We're going to press on ALT and then you will get this menu and if you've installed FS in properly you will see the co-pilot tab here and we're gonna uh, click on the in control panel so as you can see some aircraft and some things are going to be loaded uh, when you press that button and there we are and as you can see it automatically connects flight simulator to the multiplayer multiplayer session so before we're going to connect, we have to change some settings in order to run everything properly. So we're going to go here to the settings button. And as you can see, a men menu pops up with all the settings right here. And we're going to click on basic first. And here we're going to enter the default call, si default call sign. Uh, so uh, in this case, it would be Papa Auto Bravo Yankee Alpha again. Uh, enter your uh, name right here, your first name, your last name, and then your home base. Um, so let's say John Welsh just a random name and then you type the home airport right after the name just like this so after you have set your uh, name and uh, home airport correctly we're gonna go to network and then we're gonna click on VETSIM because of course VETSIM is the uh, network we want to connect to uh, enter your ID here, your password, and your call sign here again. Um, then select one of the service uh, load servers, and of course, uh, as you see, 
as you have seen with Squawk Box, uh, the UK server gave the best ping results, so we're going to select the UK server. And after everything is correctly set, you simply have to click on the VETSIM button right here. And this will connect you to the VETSIM network. It will also load all the weather. If you want to have CAF OK weather, so good for VFR flying, you press on this button so that you have a good VFR weather. As you can see, there's another airplane in the area. And we are now live on the VETSIM network. So that's how you connect with FSIN. Uh, as you can see, it's a bit more tricky. Sometimes things might go wrong. As you can see, the weather is now changing to the normal uh, local weather. So make sure you uh, s uh, uh, set everything correctly in the settings. Make sure there's nothing wrong. Make sure you read the tutorial on the forums, uh, the VETSIM forums. There's a good tutorial in order to connect if you still have problems. So this is how you connect to the VETSIM network using both Squawkbox and FSIN. In the next video, we're going to show you how to file a flight plan to the VETSIM network. So thanks for watching this video and good luck with flying on VETSIM.